Hi, this is Ricky Sun. I'm a Pi consultant. In this video, I'm going to talk about the map of the Pi system. To start off, um, let's talk about the data source. The data source could be the GCS system, which could be uh, PCS7, which I talk about, um, and maybe Delta V, right? PCS. And then we have SCADA system, right? You hear, you have heard about ignition SCADA, right? SCADA system is very common days. It's, it's, there are many, many SCADA systems that we don't even know. And, but they are called SCADA system. And then you, we have database as well. Database like it could be Oracle or C, Microsoft SQL database. And they are all like collecting the signal from the field. Right? It, could, it could be from pressure, temperature, or level transmit, transmitter. And these get send to those system and then how do the data get to the pi system the pi system have pi interface there are 452 or something of pi interface which means it can collect data from 452 system right it wrote for the different system language and convert it to the pi system so i think that's the selling point because when let's say you only have bcs system before but after a while you feel oh you got a new system called scalar system and if you don't have a pi interface that support that then you have to program your own, right? But in your case, you have plenty of options and it should have one that covers your need. Right? So for scalability, it's easier. You just have to buy one interface. But if you are starting, oh, I don't have more option. You lost the, okay, let's say there's no interface for scalar system then you have to program your own you cannot buy an interface and then it won't be fast it will be slow you have to get someone program it test it and it, it will take forever right even with chat gpt nowadays so so you don't you don't want to out, you don't you want to avoid programming that's why interface exists like this Pi system a cell for a reason, right? And then there is Pi connector. Pi connector are called smart connector as well because it can create a hierarchy just like the PCS system, right? If you have a hierarchy here, it will be created by this Pi connector and send it to the Pi server. So Spark connector, but I heard a beaver don't want to enhance it. So whatever is already built, it's out there, but it won't be enhanced by other than the bug, bug fixes, but it is very smart and user-friendly as well for me. So connectors, that's Spark connectors, right? Can collect data from different system as well. And then there is one new one called RPI adapter. So Pi adapters, um, you have to program, kind of script. It's called edge command. Then you can configure your adapters to collect data from different system. It's very powerful, but you have to do a little bit out of your comfort zone right to collect the data from your from 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 other places right because 
either you need to send web API call to the adapter to configure it or you use edge command. So it's something, but I heard they are going to enhance it. This is the area of focus, right? Uh, FIFA will spend more energy on that than the other two because uh, they like the new stuff. I like the new stuff too. So, um, so these things are, are the middleman to get the data to Pi system. It is rolled to different things, different system language, right? It can talk to the silo system language and convert it to the Pi language. So the Pi system is a Windows operating system that like it's just a piece of software you install within the Windows server. So what does it have? It has Pi data archive. And Pi Data Archive pretty much store your time series data. So you have, let's say you have a temperature tag called temperature one, two, three, four, five with a value and a timestamp, and it will keep value, timestamp, value, timestamp forever until the signal disappear in the DCS system or SCADA system, right? So the interface is responsible, like this interface connector or adapter is responsible to send the data to the data archive, timestamp and the value. And then we have a thing called AF. What is AF? As a framework, it can let you structure your data so you can find your data easier. And that's kind of like you can make a structure hierarchy that fits your need. It's very customizable. And then we have Pi Analytics. Pi Analytics can let you make calculation from the Pi AF. Uh, you have to put it all the data in AF and link it to the Pi data, Pi data archive data, so that you can make your analytic calculation. So you once you create the, a calculation, you can also create a tag to store the data as well. So it can continuously do that. And on top we have event frame. So event frame generation. How do you do that? You can Let's say you have a condition, like you have a tank, you have a tank level, you don't want to go over 80% level. Then you can set a event frame to, to trigger when it is above 80%. Um, that will capture the start time of when it is above 80%, and then when it is lower than 80%, it will stop the event frame. So this event frame, and then lastly is the Pi notification. So Pi notification also works with event frame. When you have a trigger, which is like above 80% of the tank level, because you don't want to spill oil or, or dirty water on the floor, you want to make sure you send the notification to the responsible people that can help you deal with the situation right so notification you can send email or sms to people so they get alert and they can take reactive action so that's the pi system side and then on the on this side we can have pi vision So Pi Vision is the flagship product from OSI Software on Fever. It, it can let you draw trend and create dashboard. So 
pretty powerful um, and there is videos on that and we can send the data to Excel as well we can we can okay we can put the data into dashboard we can also put the data in Excel and the product name is called Pi Data Link so so that's that's the two most important product that you can visualize your data and we call it Pi Client we call it Pi Client I-E-N-T call it Pi Client because they are kind of like a client of the Pi system and let me draw the line as well and then we have Pi Data Access so what this does Pi Data Access consist? We have JDBCODBCOLEDB Enterprise OLEDB Provider Provider and uh, maybe as high as QL client in a wide Pi Web API. There's a lot of AFSDK and then Pi PowerShell. Yeah, so these are the tool you can use to get the data from Pi and then make your programming. Um, you can also, so this part you can write SQL query you can write a SQL query to get data from Pi. And for Pi Web API, AFSDK, and also PowerShell, Pi PowerShell, which kind of script, kind of, they are kind of like programming. So maybe these two are programming, and this one is like script. Yeah. So lastly, I want to talk about the Pi integrator for business analytics. So what does it do? What can, can it do? It can send the data to the cloud. So, so maybe the last thing I want to talk about is the cloud. So this one is on-prem still, right? On this side, we have process network. We have the Pi system. Maybe it can be in the corporate network. It could be on the process network. Up to you. And then the client should be in the post uh, co corporate network because uh, it's easier, right? And then, and then the cloud. Now the Pi integrator for business analytics. It can send the data to AWS, Google Cloud, Google Cloud, or Azure. Right? So it's easier for people that doesn't require to do programming, right? You don't need programming language. Uh, knowledge to use the Pi integrator. But if you in house have a SQL guy, a database guy, or the programming guy, maybe you can have the other option that you don't need a product. You use people to replace the product because you have to create some SQL query to get the data from Pi and and then send it over to Azure, for example. So, so here, just a couple, couple, couple things. You can have Azure Data Factory. With uh, maybe REST, REST, or ODBC. So with REST or ODBC, you can utilize this 
Pi Web API, for example, Pi X Web API will use REST. So you configure Azure Data Factory with REST to talk to your Pi Web API on prem using self host integration one time. That is a software that you can download from Azure Data Factory when you configure the data source or what do you call that? Data sets. So, so that's how data get to Azure Data Factory. And when it get, go to Azure Data Factory, it can go to SQL Server or maybe maybe Azure SQL, right? Um, that's kind of the cloud. Is actually want to emphasize this cloud product is not OSI stuff or it's not Aviva stuff. I want to, to make sure to, to tell you. And we have Aviva Data Hub. Or connect, I think they call it connect now. They call connect. I recently found out they call connect. So you could send your Pi data to Azure, Azure uh, uh, Aviva Data Hub. So or connect. Then you can get the data to the cloud, and then you can have. The Power BI dashboard, right? right? And and you can do that too, or you can do that too. So Aviva Data Hub could connect. It can it can collect the Pi server data to connect, right? You just have to install the Pi agents but I know the adapter can also send data to Aviva Data Hub or Connect so you don't need the Pi server and then sh show that to Connect and then when Connect have the data you can make it make the data available to the cloud different software and that's how i understand the map of the pi system maybe it's a little more than the pi system because i touch connect as well but that's the most up to date the map that i i think uh everyone should know thank you for watching